had a snowing accident. Hi, Miss Kim. Hi. How y'all doing? <laughs> Good. How are you? Hi, Miss Kim. Hi. Give me a minute. It's time to do the day for you to get a calendar. <laughs> You're not in 2017 or at least in 2019. Okay, I'm recording this. Hello? Oh, yes. Hi, Miss Kim. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing good. I love your gear. Right. So, I, yeah. I can't. Yes, See you then. <laughs> yes. I love that. Okay. I love the gold on purple. Yeah. Royalty. We're in business, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let me go back. I guess you guys can see me though. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I um no, I gotta go back because I'm gonna be that messed up. You know, I have a question for you. Um pertains to what we're learning and I don't know that if you covered it or not um, but it's something that I saw when I was looking at my um, you know when I was looking over my natal chart and then when I was looking over um, Jaden's it's something that came up so um, I was going to ask if where it says like uh, you know like your chart points where your descendant sign mm -hmm. So my descendant sign is Taurus, right? And I wondered if that means that I'm descended from a Taurus, because if that's the case, that would mean, you know, well, it correlates uh, because it's my, my dad is a Taurus. It does correlate. So you were coming out of a phase um, at that time when you was being born or um, Taurus was, um, coming out of a phase, but let's talk about that another time. Yes, ma'am. This is Capricorn. Okay. We can get together on that personally, but yes, yeah, that's a phase. And um, so Capricorn, um, first I want to relate to why um, the integration of astrology and uh, the, the Bible um, I actually can see um, the Lord of Harvest and the Lord of Time, which is Saturn. So when you go back into the Bible, you can um, see the scriptures that are there because the Lord of Harvest um, is who you call and it's the seasons, right? So as you brought up um, Taurus, all of the... Um, astrological signs and the months have to do with a season, right? And so um, when you look at the whole system, uh, people are able to progress and um, progress and prosper more because they understand how planting went. Even, you know, when you look at Jesus and he's saying that the sower reaped, okay? So I want to put that in there because I'm not moving away from anything but there's an integration of understanding that life is holistic and if you don't understand some parts or you can't get the understanding on some parts you'll be missing uh, a whole lot because the the bible is history and that goes for any of the religious um leaders because religion is a, a taught method of practice for devotion but they all would hope that you would um, integrate into a spiritual being or understanding spiritual things so that you can find your way back home. And when you find your way in this here process, what's going to happen is, is that you begin to understand that you're not just a human being, you're a star. And the stars uh, that, uh, or the pieces of the stars that spark within us come from the universe. And the universe has given us uh, the ability to come here in a body, but that universe and that spark of the star, which is coming from the sun, S-U-N, 
um, is uh, our lifeline, all right? So it's a lot to this, um, but I want everybody to start getting an understanding of the context because there's things that, again, were taken out for people to not understand, but for, for those that understand the mysteries, they'll be led into understanding the whole connection. Because how can you know so much about the earth but not know about the heavens? Uh, if you know about the heavens and then the earth, you're going to come into a um, divine whole um, being. Why? Because why would you be born under a earth sign and have a descending in the earth sign? And that, that means that because you have that earth in you, right? Then the other thing is, is that you have air in you. You have water, all right? So earth, wind, fire, air, and water. So with, with, these, um, with that formula, what most people are not understanding is, is that formula is needed for people to know how to manifest. Um, you use it. In the Bible, the fire is the Holy Spirit, all right? And the fire is connected to the sun, which Jesus talks about, okay? So I, I want to make the correlation because um, I, I began to sit, you know, shift into things according to spirit, but I got to know how to put that foundation together. And the reason why you're shifted is because there's a time of liberation for people. And liberation cannot be sought out by one vehicle. That's why a lot of people are stuck. Now, I, I'm, I wouldn't debate with anybody, but I would say the freedom comes through that part of Uranus that's in us because Uranus is about brotherhood and unity. And we studied um, Uranus last, two weeks ago. And so we know that there is people that have a higher level of uh, desires for freedom. And usually they're going to be the ones that are gonna go and become trailblazers to become um, uh, advocates for freedom in some aspect, advocating, right? And um, so I, I'm one of those people. Um, however, um, society can keep you restricted and then Saturn can. So Saturn, um, is a wonderful energy, but it is very um, rigid. And um, I want to read all of my notes off. And this is before the integration of its spirituality. Um, a person with Saturn is very rigid, inflexible. Uh, they're very unforgiving. And I can uh, relate to that because those are areas that I've dealt with. Um, but I'm compelled through love now. When I was younger, it was no way. No, you're wrong. Get out. And so I shut out people, right? So a slave driver is what they are. They feel like people can drive like them. Um, and, and that cannot be so, but we could balance it and become motivators to show them that if they press on, it's in the mind. Because Capricorn Saturn energy is a uphill driven type of energy. You know, the goat is denoted. There's a part of the goat that looks like a fish. So half of it is um, about the water and the other part is about earth. Um, there is the aspect of it manifesting from, I've heard uh, a crocodile type of looking um, um, animal into the um the goat image which later on if it is if the person works with their spirituality to um cultivate it it turns into um the mystical uh um, um animal i don't want to really say animal but uh like it looks like the unicorn all right um the uh, other things that um, Capricorn um, beholds that needs to be in check is not always being able to be objective. It's the truth. Um, 
I was not objective because they have a rigid mindset that says it's my way or no way. And I often felt like when I started, you know, discovering myself that Capricorn was the devil because um, there is a hellish type of mindset. And I would say uh, definitely for a Capricorn that is born in uh, the 10th house. Um, now my Capricorn is in the 12th house, but it didn't stop me from having these characteristics. So these classes are to self-examine. Um, if you have your chart and you want to look at where Capricorn is in your chart, and um, everyone had a uh, signs and symbol chart. Um, if anybody doesn't have it, when you're taking notes later on, you can email me and I will send it to you. But it's important for you to know the house that it's in because rather than just going into a lot of the history, I'm going to give everybody a little um, bit of the challenges because the challenges uh, of Capricorn is what you need to master. Uh, it's what people around you that have this energy need to master because Capricorn is a mastery um, energy and it's an initiating energy. So that means that each and every one of us um, have the energy and we are being initiated um, into higher levels or um, in, yeah, into higher levels if we can make it, right? And so it is a very um, restrictive energy, which means that you are in class, all right? Like a lot of people believe that they came here um, to just live the way that they want to. Well, if you keep believing that and you don't pay attention to the energies and what's going on in the world, you are going to be left behind. And if you don't master the lessons that this energy gives you, um, which means that you are able to give it balance as well. Um, say like your part would be saying, okay, I don't want to be rigid anymore. Well, that's a natural trait of a Capricorn energy from Saturn. So you got to talk to that Saturn archetype and tell it. And that's even like praying because Jesus said the Lord of the harvest will come. And he talked about his sickle. So he will come and he would, chop down all of the harvest and then there would be a uh, um, dividing of the uh, wheat and tares. And the reason why is it represented the people who really was working for good, okay? The wheat and tares, wheat is the good and tares are the evil. So Saturn is doing um, accountability towards people that are thinking, doing, and being wicked. And um, this is not to be afraid. It is just to make um, uh, individuals understand the energy because we'll be in this energy, which is major until 2020. Uh, the other one, and that's, you know, it's in its return. Um, a lot of people that didn't understand this return will receive positive and negative karma. It does not matter if you uh new or not i didn't know when i went through a hellish time in my life but i tell you what i learned okay because it was just that painful so the energies are actually there teaching us something you know if you get this energy coming into you and we all have it what happens is is that it's pure energy and if we have not released something it will compile with negative and it will cause us to go into confusion and that's why it's important to um understand that it is a rigid planet or um energy but because you are in the world you cannot operate off of that you cannot be inflexible those are areas um that we want to spiritualize because that's the way that change comes. And that's where your Bible comes in with the um, astro um, planets, the energy and all of that. The spiritual part of you wants to be birthed. As long as you stay rigid, inflexible and unforgiving, um, what's going to happen is that you're not going to grow. 
that the spiritual spark of you that wants to come alive and do is due diligence in this lifetime for you, what you came here to do, your purpose. Um, and even maybe if you have karma from another life, then you are here to do that. And so if he, this is the Lord of harvest. This is the Lord of karma. All right. That means that I learned some heavy lessons because of things that I gave out. And, and it does not mean that because you are not born under the sign Capricorn, because you have the energy. And that's why people are receiving reports that they don't want to. Um, it's not just that they did something, but there are people that are coming, they, they have past lives that they promised or they said, I will take on and I will do this and I will change maybe the family cycle, maybe the political cycle. And you know, if it's political in you and you don't go forth or you're an advocator, imagine what you are holding back from the world and you'll be held accountable for that. Now this is real, real truth because when, when you see Christ and he was talking about people, he overcame a lot of things. Uh, and one of the things that Capricorns have to overcome is materialism, big time. Uh, they love money. Um, they love nice things. It's nothing wrong with it, but there's a balance. And the initiations are going to um, challenge you because anyone that's being um, initiated in this uh, mastery, in mastery, is going to be called and they, they're going to have problems with money. Why? Because they have to let go of what they believe as a earth sign. Most earth signs believe in material things. So you will find that in Venus, um, Libra, and Taurus. All right. They, they love money and material things. They love, they, they believe that they're divas. Now, uh, the, the ones that are born as Capricorns in um, the 10th house, they, they don't look at themselves as divas, not even in, in January, you know, because January Capricorns are starting to experience that Aquarius energy and they just want to be free. They will come here with those traits of um, selfishness, um, ambition, um, the desire and the drive for money, but your, nor your nodes will tell you where you're supposed to go with um, that cycle. And we are in, uh, let's see, south yeah capricorn south node and cancer north node so there's a lot of people that are experiencing shifts in what they had been doing and what they are doing and, and you know a little bit to understand on that the north node and the south the south node is what you did before the north node is what you're going into so, you know, it, it could look like with people that things are not working and that North Node is going to affect everyone and the South Node because it needs to shift for um, the world to be more effective. Like you, you could have been in a place of work as, you know, Capricorn energy and um, it's not working out there. And that's because it's really telling you that there's something changing about your life. And that's what people don't look at, the change. Pay attention to the signs. Don't jump because it will lead you. Now this is with all zodiac signs because they're governed by the cosmos, which is uh, our goddess and our God. These planets were birthed out of the sun and the moon. It's just like a family. So, you you won't go wrong if you if you have a spiritual lifestyle with any of of what you do but you cannot follow your ego that's why it's important to understand your sun sign so in the capricorn sun sign with saturn in the in the 10th house that's where the ego is and it's saying you're too rigid you're inflexible you're unforgiving how can you be someone that's going to advocate or be a political leader to change things for people with that kind of mindset. Look at the ones we have now, right? Um, they also allow interferes to dominate their decisions. 
That means that the walls can be up concerning what other people are saying. Well, let's go to the left and they're saying no, really because they have fear and they will control situations. They're controlling type of people until they get into that spiritual walk, right? So I could tell you a whole lot about them, but I want to tell you some of the other things that would be um, definitely key points that you, you will see in yourself, in your energy concerning Capricorn, how strong it is and the people around you. They are builders. They are builders. That means that they can build a house, they can build um, cars, um, wherever their uh, energy is. It, you know, if you're a Leo, you're gonna be creative with energy. A lot of Leos would stagnate themselves being in the 10th house by not initiating creativity, but it can be a struggle because of the uh, characteristics of the 10th house with Saturn, it, rigid, inflexible, unforgiving, critical, perfectionist, you know? Um, they're builders and they build people when they really get deep. They build communities, you see? And um, the building of themselves, the building of people uh, will be an affected energy that's coming over from Aquarius. Because uh, we've talked about the fact that we think that the wheel goes around from Aries, um, the first house, to the 12th. But we realize that the Piscean age is gone out or it is going out and we're coming into the Aquarius age, which means things are going that way, right? So what happens is, is that we're going from the Piscean age, which was the Christ age. And that's not to say that Christ is not amongst the people. It's simply saying that um, the, the methods of religion is not gonna work for people anymore. And we see that happening. Um, I do deal with a lot of people that they probably, you know, I say they think I'm crazy. I'm good with that now because I understand myself better. But the, the Christ did not, it spoke of liberty, which is Uranus energy. It's a freedom energy. So as Jesus spoke of salvation and, you know, leading people into liberty, it takes me into a mindset of advocation. I don't see him as a religious leader. Um, and I never did after I started, you know, spirit started working with me with those scriptures because what I see with him is that he was able to help people get healed. He didn't do it. He helped them to understand it. That's freedom. He helped people to overcome financial deficits. So the part that I'm talking about with Aquarius is a part that comes into Capricorn's energy and it gives them the liberation but see that's in the spiritual aspect and when you look at Jesus and he said they that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth then you can understand that he had maximized his potential in the 12 houses all right so I know it's deep but it's worth it and it's going to be good for you all that stick with it because you're going to have something one up you know there's people that i talk to individually and i've had people say i just never heard that concept before well good because when you look at it it's there you know everything about our books our history the bibles the qurans all of their history they're their story. So we have a philosophy that we can adhere to, but there's the spirit in these uh, his, in the history that comes to people and tell them, well, this is how it goes. So you can see even Pluto's energy in um, the Bible and its transformation power. And that's in John. So moving on from there, the 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 the, the Aquarius energy will not, it won't, it won't 
put up with anything. It's like, whatever I say, you know, it's got to go. But it's a brotherly energy. And it's saying we got to get people free. And it's going to say that in volumes to some people. And some people are going to be like, okay, freedom is coming. But some people are going to be those freedom movers. And in the Capricorn aspect of the spiritual uh, walk, when they're allowing themselves to transform, they will find themselves like Martin Luther King. Because he's, you know, he's a Capricorn. The transformation coming. Um, and others. Uh, I think I have, oh, yeah, Richard Nixon is here. Um, now, I don't know if I want to be like him, but um, yeah. Uh, the pharaohs, kings. Um, uh, moreover, they have a politician type of energy because they are... Um, change game changers and this is a game change season with all of these big planets i hope you guys are keeping up so what is your lesson you know what has saturn been teaching you about yourself what is it that you don't see or you don't want to see right so let me just tell you about yeah i want to say this here before i move into this saturn is a motivational energy when it's changed for the better it's not as it's not ridiculing it takes time um i know that it is a slow paced uh energy because i've worked with it i am a mulling person i mull over things many people that i've met in this position uh they have to think and and you see the goat going uphill by itself it needs isolation time because there is a manifester in there. Uh, one of the key phrases about Capricorn is I use. And um, one of the, you know, I'm a manifester. So um, many of them that use the energy, not even when they don't know, will manifest. But there'll come a critical time in life when you will see that you're not able to manifest like you did. And that's a cue that something is changing that you need to pay attention to. And it's not your manifesting ability, but it could be something about the attitude, the way you treat people. Because whatever you give out, you're gonna get back and it will hit your pocket. And it will hit, yeah, it'll hit your pocket. It'll hit your family. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, for Capricorns, it's a quick, it's a turnaround energy. It's gonna get you. Because it's like a dad you have got to get this together okay and that's how it you know i feel like it speaks because i used to be like i can't do anything wrong everything right so um, once it's changed you can see the heart because the people are misunderstood because of the way that they're seen in the frame People don't see their heart because there is the frame is saying something else. It sends mi mixed signals, okay? Um, so let me just go into, who, who had, who was? Okay. Who has Aries um, in Saturn? Anybody know? No? Okay, I'm going to read a little bit about it anyway. So um, Aries in Saturn, its um, challenge is um, learning to take initiative in your life by acting on your best intuitive hunch. So that means that the individual needs to learn from within. They need to understand that um, solar plexus area and what it's saying to them. And there's no way that anybody can become spiritualized in this area because it's a tough energy without meditation and prayer. You, you have to have a devotion. And I'm gonna say this here, you have to have a devotion because the people over in Mecca, they worship the um, cube that has to do with Saturn. So that's, that's a whole lot of other stuff. And for Saturn to be picked out amongst other religion, I mean, other signs, there is some um, some deep um, understandings um, that deal with, yes, a cult. Uh, you can't run from it. You know, the star of David was derived from it because it has that star on the top. So there was a cultivation of um, spirituality 
and the uh, cube at Mecca, the Jews use it. And, you know, there's others that bow to it. So there's a lot to learn about this planet. And it's, this, it's in its, its second go round. Um, it was, it rained or the Cap, Capricornian energy rained about, I think it said 24,000 years ago, of course, before Christ. And um, it, it's gonna be about 2000 years again. So after the Aquarian age, it's gonna come in again, all right? Um, so these are cycles. And um, that's the history of Capricorn and any other sign. I, I like for people to know it. And, and that's just my way because I have to go to the beginning to find out um, information. And it does well for me because I understand in depthly. Um, I don't just want to say, well, you know, we came here and this is what we do. I want us to get an understanding of why we came. So um, the effects of Aquarius is going to take Capricorn into um, its new era. And it has a, a lot to do with the spiritual cultivation and the as aspects of what Capricorn is supposed to do. The energy is to build. So if Aquarius came in and it is liber liber liberty, it is liberty that is taking people out of traditional thinking, what man has told them they should do society and all of this. Um, and that's just a little portion of it, is bringing people back collectively into unity. And Capricorn will take that energy and begin to rebuild off of it rather than off of the tradition, which put men in office and there's no women. Yes, we're coming into a balance. And, and the, the way that you know that we're coming into a balance is not to say that the men are wrong, but the patriarchal system had to do with men, and that was set up by the Roman Catholics. Um, it goes back into Egypt and that kind of thing, but we're looking at women's lib and the fact that women's lib, it was never really put in stone. Femin you know, the feminine energy is still suffered, and it's suffered in women and men because we are created out of both energies. One is more dominant than the other. For me, it was more dominant in the male energy than it was female. And that's not to say that I was, you know, preferably in my um, sexuality. Um, it has a lot to do with my past and the karma, like my father wasn't there. So um, the energy of male was more dominant because I would have to, you know, kind of struggle and fight for things like a man does. And um, so, if any of that resonates with you, then, you know, take it, but understand that we're all um, in, in this here to build a greater uh, nation. And um, so again, the Aries, um, it is a bit of, oh, there's a conflict there. Um, they have to discipline the spontaneity. Um, and that is part of their test, meaning that they in Saturn will need to balance out wanting to move too quickly, rationalize uh, things and make sure that it's what you are supposed to do. Um, it says the question continually can be very intense about your search for who you are because Aries is. Um, I am, or you can look at who am I. They're trying to identify with who they are. So that's, that, that's what that first house is about, period. And so when you get the understanding of the will, you understand that they have a concept. And the concept is, who am I? The question continually emerges for the Aries, prompting um, you to throw yourself into some new challenge to test your identity. All right. Saturn is restraint and you must learn from experience how to gain control of your will so that you can call on it when you need it and relax it when you don't. That that's a big part with Saturn. Um, I think anybody that has it 
um, they're going to need to balance out that seriousness and um, some of the as other aspects. So um, for the Aries, the person in Aries that has Saturn, it says in relationships, yours is, is the razor's edge test of maintaining individually without violating the integrity of others. So the, the person in Aries period is looking for their identification. And when you put Saturn in that house, they identify, but they can put people to a test and then that test can cause them to fail the test. Um, your fear of losing yourself in a relationship has to be worked through in order to develop satisfying ties with others, all right? So I, I'm going to go on. There's more here concerning them. Uh, anybody that has Aries there, they could do a session and we could, you know, get down with that. So Taurus, anybody that has Saturn in Taurus represents the challenge. And I, I picked the challenge because it's what you need to overcome. I give you a little bit on the relationship, but you go with that. All right. You got you. You are here to satisfy weak areas to build them up. That's the major thing with uh, Saturn. Building up your weak areas, your strengths. You already know it's like when you were a child and you came into the world for Saturn, there were entrepreneur skills and stuff that I just knew how to do. I knew how to do cut. I knew how to cut hair. Um, at 13 years old, I knew how to make money and it was inherited, but I shifted out of the hair salon business uh, in 2009. I, that was my career for about 20 something years, shifted me, I felt it. And um, did I become afraid? No, because I saw myself going into psychology. I don't think I wanted to go to school and all of that. You know, it will help somebody to understand when they feel like what they're doing is not fulfilling anymore. I loved it. And for me to lose the passion in it, <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with me? I don't want to do this no more. I love cutting hair. So, you know, the artist part. So anyway, Taurus represents your values, particularly concerning the material world, how you earn your money and how you spend it. And given that, you know, Taurus is a earth sign. So understand, Saturn here will pressure you to constantly work on defining these values. Security issues are likely to be the core of your main challenge. Your resourcefulness at providing for your security needs will certainly be put to the test, as will your relationship with your possessions. So uh, it's back to what I was saying. Earth signs are materialistic. So their possessions in that will be put to, to, put a, put to a test. Do you own them or do they own you? You see, you tend to worry about not having enough and this has affected your capacity to enjoy the abundance of what you do have. So it's an ungrateful type of thing when you're only looking at what you don't have versus what you do have. And if you practice gra gratitude, what you can come into, because that's where higher you know, consciousness and the energy takes you up. And it's spiritual. Because anything that you speak by the power that lives within you, you're just that important. You're uh, manifesting it. So that's anybody now, but this is Taurus uh, mainly. It says Taurus issues are not particularly relationship oriented and honoring the importance of your partner in your life can be overlooked. Worst case scenario would be you relating to your mate as a possession. My mother, she dominates, okay? Um, or more likely your partner's can feel uninvolved in your life unless you include them in the process. The Gemini, Saturn in Gemini. The challenge is, yours is the test of staying open-minded and communicative. Given a choice, you would like to be recognized as a great communicator, perhaps as a songwriter, a playwright, or journalist, or a poet. One way or another, you will or you, you crave recognition and fear rejection through your use of words. At 
at times you feel that you cannot adequately express yourself, that your uh, communication of who you are and what you think presents an insurmountable barrier. This is a fear that you must be willing to face and then forget ahead in your attempt to make connections with the world around you. Realize that part of your test is to be informed and this is realized through listening to others openly and attentively. You have a tremendous respect for learning yet apprehension concerning your ability to learn can be a problem. So um, the restriction or people not listening to someone that has Gemini and Saturn or Saturn and Gemini is the fact that they have to learn how to listen, not be the, the voice of reason for um, all things, all right? So Saturn in Capricorn, I mean in Cancer. The Cancer deals with personal emotions, how you feel about your life and involvement. Um, Saturn here shows that your soul came into this life to be tested in its ability to create, sustain, an emotionally nurturing environment, both externally through your physical home and internally as one who nurtures and provides others. This may be easy, easily enough said, but this is exactly where you are and the most vulnerable. Um, this can be a hard place because cancers are emotional. They're the moon. And you know Saturn has those traits of control. You really, you, I mean, everyone in these, in this aspect um, with Pluto, all of the, the big uh, Neptune, you, you have to meditate in order to get aligned because you can't just read this and come into an understanding. This is consciousness. And um, some of this information is coming from astrology and relationships, David Pond, because I don't want to take anybody's information. What I know, I know, but I wanted to give more um, information to um, you guys as I come upon it, you know, and um, you can study for yourself. So it says, this may be easily said, but this is exactly where you are most vulnerable. And Saturn people don't like to be vulnerable. Now that's an achievement. Um, I have um, my North Node is in Cancer, and um, I felt about probably 10 years ago that I just didn't care about what people said or thought about me, so I'm open. You know, whatever goes on, I'm very transparent, and that I found out was one of, you know, um, the test of me coming into the Node, the North Node, that I would be vulnerable um, and I would teach people um, through my own experiences. So, you know, sometimes you have people that you're working with and you might self-disclose. Um, you'll have the energy of a um, advisor or someone that builds. If you build, you're not going to build people without, you know, um, educating them. And so, all of this was an alignment for my life. The things that I went through was an alignment for me to come into that I would be able to help others align their lives. And um, the emotional part of cancer, if you don't know and you have cancer in your chart, you, you want to you know, focus on that area too because a lot of people lose control their lack of discipline and it's because of the the water sign in their um chart that um if you have no control of discipline if you have outburst and you know you have um fits yeah fits of rage um <laughs> that is something in in cancer that will be provoked especially with saturn there because saturn can be controlling again and it will learn by the person will learn by hard lessons that you got everything is going to be balanced everything is going to be libra 
everything is going to be justified and brought into justice but it's it's how we see it so um the test is will you let your insecurities and fears push away the closest of ties or will you become an authority of what a nurturing environment is all about and set about creating it knowing where you belong is important and is discovered once you allow yourself to take on emotional responsibilities without feeling them as a burden like somebody called me last night and um, they needed prayer i think it was about 11 10 30 something like that and i looked at my phone and i was like really but you know I, you know, I went on and answered and um, that's part of your emotion. It's like, do you have empathy enough to know that this is someone that you work with um, and if they call at this time, they need you possibly, right? So um, emotional um, feelings and, you know, without feeling that it's a burden, yeah, it's what you do. You're building people, Kim, so you need to answer that call, possibly. And so Saturn and Leo. The challenge, yours is the test of leadership and it's the right use of power. Um, that's the fifth house, by the way. Leo deals with affairs of the heart, with the enjoyment of life and with the ego um, formation and expression. Saturn in this sign seeks to restrain, restrict, and limit uh, this developing ego. Ego is very important to deal with in Leo, period, because it's the sun. And anybody's sun is going to tell them that you got stuff to get rid of. Aries, sun, whatever. Your sun is what you need to get in check because that's your ego. All right. Um, your challenge might be thought of as somewhat of a game. Leos are not restrained easily. Why not be the best at what you do? Why not win wherever possible? You've probably learned that in your relationship, this success syndrome can undermine your happiness. Balance success. Balance it. Especially if you have Saturn in Leo. Because everything about Saturn is ambition when it's unspiritualized. And it's nothing wrong with ambition, but it has to be balanced. Um, with Saturn, it's workaholic. Um, so you take that and you put it in any house, you can figure it out. Those are some of the, um, the traits um, that have to be dealt with. You can't be ambitious and have a family. You're going to have to sacrifice something if you do that. Um, they like to be status quo and, and, and recognized as well. I was like, man, where does that come from? Because I always wanted to be in the background. I didn't want nobody looking at me, you know. So my lesson also in that was I used to hear spirits saying, no, you're not going to be back there. And I would see myself when I was younger at parties, always in the, the darkest part of the party room, right? And people would walk back or guys would walk back all the way in the darkest areas and find me. And it's like, how? I didn't want to. I, I still don't, but I'm, I accept that, you know, I have something that people need to look at me and see, but it's, it's not important to me. So um, it says a right balance of ego for the Leo. Um, the right balance of ego strength is required. So balance, you know, I'm telling you, knowing when to assert yourself and when to restrain yourself. Um, is it the power of love or the, pop, the love of power? Those are questions. What most animates your behavior and relationships? The path out of these struggles lies in developing the presence of mind to ask yourself if your motivation is coming from your heart or not. You will know the answer by how much love and joy your behavior is bringing. If your success are not bringing you increased happiness, do you have the character strength to restrain your ambitions? 
All right. So that drive, um, balance for everyone, period. That's what it's going to take all of us to in our life is to balance our areas. If you shop too much, you need balance. And your shopping will take you into a place where you have no money, and that's why you need balance. People that do drugs, they, they overindulge, and so they need um balance but innately what's going to happen is because they become addicted the brain has been wired for uh addiction now and um it's called a disorder and um so it's uh hard unless you know they work on their spirit man and they become desensitized in within the brain function and the snaps the dopamine is balanced out again so as a addicted, um, anybody that became addicted, I, I wouldn't mess with it. But it, my, my thing is explaining balance for everything. When you start thinking balance, you can move away from the fact that you are a Capricorn or a Cancer or Aries or a Leo or a Taurus. And you'll start seeing that the ego is what that was. And now you can just be free to be yourself, which means that you're balanced. You're balanced in your eating, you know? You're balanced in your thinking. You're balanced in, you know, how you speak to people. Because a lot of times people aren't taught this, all right? And the other part of the teaching for me is psychologically, these signs, um, they have mental health issues attached to them because of the imbalance in the equilibrium of the brain the body, all right? So it gets deep and I love that because there's a part of me that resonates with science and research. So um, Virgo, in uh, Saturn in Virgo, yours is the test of learning moderation and discrimination in search for perfection. Virgo is another earth sign. Virgos are very intelligent people, but they can be compulsive and overzealous. They overwhelm you in what they want. And so this search for perfection, they have to find that they have that. And that's nothing but the devil. Capricorn, devil, get over your perfection. <laughs> only the, you know, only person that thought they was perfect was that um, archetype of Satan. There's no, nobody that's perfect. That's why we're here examining this information. You can usually think of something in your life that needs improving and you set out to remedy the situations. That's good. This attitude works well in professional pursuits but can be problematic in love. So there's a, um, a balance. We might have to look at the love area because Virgos are workaholics as well. They're about that money. They believe that they know everything. Virgos are something else, but they're very intelligent people. They're very analytical, which can be a problem. Now I'm talking outside of Capricorn. Um, the analytical part of them can keep them from coming into a spiritual nature because they question everything. It's okay to question, but if you don't go to spirit to get the answers or you don't have that relationship, you what you're doing now, is um, working on the perfection of who you are. Well, I just wouldn't do that. And you're not me. And you're not them. So Virgo in um, Saturn, when this gaze of perfection falls on your relationship, you cannot help but notice some of the flaws. Oh my goodness. You didn't, you didn't see, you got your own? <laughs> the trouble is relationships are rarely perfect and it's easy to find faults when you look for them. So you scrutinizing uh, Virgo and Saturn, or Saturn and Virgo. But that's part of Virgo, the sixth house. That's how they operate. And those are some of the issues that they have to overcome. When I say they look for flaws in others and they don't look for them in their self, they do. Um, yours is the, re the test of self-perfection. and. Um, Unless balanced, you can be inhibited in your own expression for fear 
of making mistakes or critical of others' lack of perfection. Um, how you approach the process of perfection is all important. Is the focus on repair or maintenance? Both work for um, Virgo. It is repair. You will always need to have problems to fix. If it, and that's the truth. They're like maintenance people. They got to be fixing something. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you're not fixing you, then it becomes a problem. And so this here is, you know, a way to look at your relationships. If you see everyone as um, flawed, that means that you're looking too in depth at them and not yourself, Saturn and Virgo. But, you know, we all um, have traits like that. We all do. Um, yeah, so Saturn and Libra. The challenge. Yours is the test of cooperation with others. Um, fairness, justice, and equality are very important issues in your relationships. And Libra is the house of relationships. So it's going to deal with relationships across the board. If you can really grasp what I'm saying, each house does the same thing, but the reaction of another planet there is going to cause it to. Uh, work in a certain way because that planet brings its own energy. So now Libra and Saturn together are um, possibly conflictual because Libra wants to love everything and it's an air sign. But then Saturn is there and it's the earth and it's saying, come down hither. You can't be up there feeling all goo goo and you know what I'm saying? You got to come on down and Libra's saying, no, I don't want to do that. I'm up here and I'm feeling great. And it's saying, get down here now. You got work to do, right? So uh, these are um, tranquility, serenity, um, see, peace. That, that's all they want, but you, you can't, you know, that's why I'm like, you fly off into, yeah, really? It, it just can't be that serious. And so he's coming back and he's saying, no, come on down. These are available to you when you are willing to defend the scales of justice and relate from a place of balance. Because air signs, you can know them. Um, they're flighty and they're up in the air. They seem like um, Marilyn Monroe type of people. And, and I um, have a couple of planets there. And I think that because I'm coming into more, I can find, I feel like I'm blind sometimes. That air is taking me over, so I have to ground myself. And air is spirit. So it says, um, you tend to be preoccupied with comparing yourself to others. You can't do it. Balance, love you for who you are. Work on what you need to to get the balance. Before you can realistically share with someone, you must first know yourself. And you know, it's important in this sign to know yourself because you are balanced. Libras, they bring balance, but without spiritualization, they lack um, balance. All right. And people that have um, Libra, uh, energy, you know, like me, I, I think it's major because I have three, three planets there and it's um, Pluto and uh, Uranus and Mars. So um, with those aspects there, I, I won't live a traditional life with partners, business and relationships, you know, because um, Uranus is not about tradition. and um, Pluto is going to break down anything traditional or that's out of order to bring it into balance. Um, all right, so it says find balance within yourself, then balance in a relationship comes on in its own. This is an important lesson for you. You can easily get caught into thinking the balance comes as a result of your relationship. And a lot of people get into that. Um, a man is what makes me or a woman is what makes me. They don't say it, but they identify 
with the need, you know? And um, so here is Saturn and Scorpio. The challenge represents the psychological impact of merging with another. And many of your challenges is in life will come to you through your emotional interactions with others. You simultaneously crave and fear intimacy. They're very guarded. They're afraid of a lot of things. There may be re repeated emotional crises in your relationship concerning attitudes around sex, money, and power. Scorpio is a power archetype, um, and it rules money and, and sex. They can dominate people with sex. But I wouldn't um, say that would be something that you want to get balanced in because they can be um, very sexual-related people. Uh, they're very attractive. Uh, there's a, uh, it's like a magnetism, a charisma about Scorpios, as well as Leos, um, that pull people to them. Um, and they're deep thinkers. They're very secretive, investigative. So when you put Saturn with this here, they're going to have fears because there's things that they need to balance out. Um, you fear losing control and your test lies in um, facing your insecurities, um, your trust issues, the paradoxes that you crave intimacy, and yet for this to occur, you must surrender control. So my, my grandmother was a Scorpio, and she didn't have a traditional relationship. She had failed marriages, but she was controlling. So when you put and I'm just saying for an instance, you know, she was. You can't control men, women, and women, you know, you can't. That's not, it's not nature. It's not. So um, there's a way of going about things. And the reason why people control things or try to across the board is because they are afraid of giving their control to others that they're going to be hurt. Okay, maybe if you control it, you're going to be hurt anyway. Why don't you let it go and live, right? Enjoy yourself because it's, it's too much energy to, to try to control something or someone. And so Scorpios will back themselves out of a relationship because they're afraid to um, be, become transparent. And Saturn is teaching you to overcome the rejection. That's your challenge. Um, man, when it comes to forgiveness and resentment, I think they could be comparable to Capricorns. Yeah, that, that. Anyway, with them being, uh, Saturn being there, it's going to be pointing you to deep transformation in union but the the, the 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 part that keeps them from getting there is fear period fear will block them from the transformation of being their highest good and that's what they're working on with saturn um saturn and sagittarius um it says it molds your philosophical nature with a strong focus on morals and ethics that become an essential part of your character. Your challenge is to put form and structure into abstract philosophy or philosophical issues. Uh, you seek out relationship based on honesty and understanding of your lofty mental wanderings. wanderings. Uh, challenges with others are likely to erupt over disagreements concerning philosophical issues. You are being tested with balancing two distinctively uh, different forces. The limiting and restricting nature of Saturn with the lofty and expansive Sagittarian ideals. So what, what it's saying is balance your Balance, okay, because Sagittarius is an expansive um, energy, and it can be overzealous. It can um, expand, um, and Saturn is teaching it to kind of like 
not you can't let it restrict you but to have a barrier where you don't over extend uh mainly we do know that they're philosophical uh, religious they can become advisors um and that's the big uh aspect with them so if saturn if you feel limited and there's a frustration there even um in exploration research or traveling because this is the big part of sagittarius it's it's out there in the world because it's expansive then you're gonna to have to work on the limiting factors of um, Saturn where you'll come into balance. Um, it says the challenge, um, it's not uncommon for one with displacement to have been raised in an extremely rigid moralistic family, which would have been experienced as repressive. Um, Repressive can be finances, it can be where there is um, something missing, period. Yeah. The challenge in adult life is in discovering your personal truth without denying the rights of others. So this is a mutable sign and Saturn will bring limits to get you isolated where you won't go off the deep end. Like if, if a person has emotional, um, mental health issues, they will expand in it. So Saturn is saying, no, get balance here, come in and bring some limits to all of this here drama, right? That's because You don't want to be too rigid. Sagittarius can bring that. Um, but because it's a mutable sign, it has fire, air, and water. You can transform into um, all of this and um, have a greater ability of flexible um, energy than. Um, just relying on the Sagittarius fire part. And with Capricorn being there, it, it can be a good balance if you realize because you got earth, wind, fire, and water, you have four elements right there, all right? But you're not going to over-dramatize and you're not going to um, allow yourself to be repressed by anything. And that would be also, you know, everyone would meditate and they will come to the core of understanding how they um, operate in this life so at the end of the day we'll find that we're all pretty much working on the same things but at different energies and um, timelines and uh, what we came here for saturn's challenge in capricorn um, Saturn in its own sign of Capricorn is strongly placed. Its worldly ambition and success are likely to be very important. You are learning the test of leadership and the right um, use of authority. Um, professionally, this is a favorable placement as you will surely know how to capitalize on uh, various opportunities that come your way. Being practical and pragmatic in business is certainly the best approach to clarity. Conversely, this placement is not a favorable for emotional relationships as you may appear to be more interested in career than love. It is not easy for you to express your emotional sensitivities as you view this as a weakness that you would like to overcome rather than to indulge in. Those closest to you may complain of you being cold and methodical about your approach to sharing love. Your challenge is in learning to be successful without having to sacrifice the personal side of your life. It's a balance because they're ambitious, ambitious and workaholics and they feel justified in their work. But there's no excuse for us not having 
emotional intelligence. Or I say, I feel like um, maybe there could have been some autism. <laughs> because, you know, you do have feelings, but you don't, it's like you don't feel until you're starting to get older. Um, I just didn't care. Whatever. You know, my mother would say stuff to me when I was younger and I would be cussing her out as a child in my thoughts. And it's like, you're so stupid. They don't know anything. I knew I was smarter than them. I knew it, but I mean, that would become a, um, something that tripped me up and it's ego. It's, it's no good. All right. So Saturn and Aquarius, you're learning how to be both responsible and independent at the same time. Wanting to be free, innovative spirit and still be accepted by the world is going to force you into finding practical ways of expressing your uniqueness. Until you find a responsible way for expressing your independence, you will experience problems in your relationships. Your independent streak will pop up at inappropriate times, such as not following through with agreements. And, and that's the part when I was talking about Aquarius um period they're very set in their ways they're going to do what they're going to do even if it causes them problems and um some of it is ego and some of it is because they have to experience it um aquarius is um uranus and uranus is a high octave um planet which means that there is a very very close divine kinship with the universal God concerning them. That uh, Aquarius energy, um, it creates and it brings liberty like Steve Jobs um, with the phone. We don't have phones in the house anymore. You know, um, part of the computer systems, um, advocators, they walk in this energy. But if you can't follow someone, that's what Saturn is trying to help you to understand. Aquarius energy, Uranus, you have it. You have to follow someone and you got to take some advice. Like I know people that are Aquarius, they're so restrictive that people are telling them how to walk, work through the system. And they're like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. So they're homeless or, you know, and I'm serious. They're, um, not, they're not stable because they feel so freely justified that what they're doing is the way. And that's cool, but you got to know all of us are here to learn something. So that means that we're all adding to each other. Of course, you have to trust who's giving you the information. But when you see that your life is not going in a productive way in certain areas, you got to visit that area to deal with it. And um, yeah, this Aquarius, that's where they're challenged. They don't like to accept what, what they're being told. They're rather to make the mistakes and suffer than to listen. And that's ego. And Saturn is telling them, you got to find a responsible way of, um, of, um, doing things you know so you might be someone to have four or five kids and you've been unstable and saturn is trying to tell you um put you know put um don't have as many kids prepare because if you keep having a lot of kids it's going to lock you down there's no freedom there that means that you're not free to express who you really are in aquarius you see um challenges lie in accepting your uniqueness rather than fighting for it and then finding a way of demonstration that in the world uh by aligning with a social cause or purpose and that's what they do if they come into their self so even someone that has again um like saturn in virgo or i've seen a chart with um virgo i mean saturn in a Virgo the sixth house and Uranus is there. And it's always going to denote um, radicalness, um, change, social, um, 
advocacy is going to always be a part that energy is it's because um that's what it does it, it wants change and it won't study how change should come it would just jump out there and do it because you know it just feels like that's what it can do but you got to study to find out how and know how the system works before you can just jump into um, being a part of social change even though it's in you because that raw energy the world is not ready for it yet like we see jesus saying that i came that you know you would have life more abundantly that's that's aquarius energy freedom i have come that you would have life abundantly because what's happening is the abundance is there but your restrictions or whatever the problem you is is keeping you from the abundant life is what you got to figure out so you always figure out what's your weakest the weakest link in you always and that's how we overcome and that's what they say how you overcome by the blood of the lamb and his testimony because you figured out why you uh, where you were weak at And, and it, it can be more than one or two areas. So um, Pisces, pattern in Pisces, uh, it says the test of putting form and structure into your faith and belief, that's manifesting and believing that it can, it can be done, that you see it and then you, you, you manifest it. It's not believe or um, it's not, um, see it and then believe it is believe and then you see it do you believe in a greater intelligence that's somehow guiding the development of your life or do you find despair and disappointment around every corner as things uh, just do not seem to work out as you plan this is precisely the challenge of faith and its flip side fear um if you have this placement, you you know you could become a martyr, struggling and suffering. Um, it's a it's a planet um, that has to do with individuality or the works, I should say, being in Pisces, undoing relative to the Piscean age. It wants freedom. Look at Jesus, not religiously as a man, and say, okay, he was advocating at that time, but see, he had to come into some understanding of himself in order for him to overcome um, some of the restrictions that Saturn can bring concerning that Piscean energy, because it's spiritual and it's mystical. They, they have to collaborate and say, okay, dude, you, you're an earth sign. And then Pisces is, you know, no, Pisces is saying, you're an earth sign. And then, um, Saturn saying, well, you mutable and you got all of this other stuff going on. Let's find out how to work together in this energy. And that's that's the greatest aspect of these these um these planets is learning how they can merge together and work when you got more than one or two there, or when you just have that one, because Pisces, which is Neptune, has to speak to Saturn. In order for it to um mitigate or um manifest anything they got to find out where the problems are together and once they do they'll find out that there's um some mental issues there uh definitely i've seen psychosis coming out of there um institutionalization um and if there is is self undoing we talked about that karma Saturn is going to deal with everyone in these houses on what they do to others and what they do wrong. You got to go back to the drawing board and do it right, even here, more so too, because it's a spiritual planet, Neptune. So whatever is out of order, this, you know, this planet is, is telling us in the house that it's in to bring it into to order. That's the reality of it. Bring balance and do not allow it as a um, Capricorn to rule you in a way where you stay rigid. Learn your lesson, soften up, you know? Over here in Aries, I am, don't be afraid of who you are because the energies of Saturn in all of the houses is gonna bring a fear in Aries. Overcome the fears. 
Why is it bringing fear? Because fear is the great attractor that says, I cannot do this if I don't stay in my ego. You can do anything in your spirit, but you have to get to the place where you understand that spirit rules. That's who you are. That's your way back home. And then the planets, they really submit and work for you because this is a universal thing. All right, any questions? What's November going to be like? I'm sorry? What is November's energy going to be like with these planets? I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is the signs in there. Um, I'm doing Mercury in retrograde. We probably can get into energy tomorrow, but we're talking about how Saturn affects um, the houses. So wherever you have Saturn at, that's where you, you want to look at and relate back to um, the video. If you took notes and see how it's affecting you and how you're going to master in that area. And um, I think all of that depends on our outlook. How things go tomorrow is, is it's our outlook. Um, you, everyone is dominating weak, weak emotions and bringing them into subjection um, to behold. Because, you know, if you, if anyone walks through life and they feel like something has a grip on them, then something does. That's the reality. But when we get to a place where nothing can grip us, it means that my energy is heightened. So the energy that is affecting people is affecting them because of them not doing spiritual work. More conversation or more with outer um, extremities than inner. The ego in each and every person that's on here today is what experiences what they don't want. But your ego is not to be in control. And you can't be in this place of discipline without spiritual work that brings you into mastery. When you, anybody, this is not just directed, I'm telling you that everything that I read, it would be null and void if you are consciously practicing. Because eventually it's gonna work. That mind is affected by energy and it reacts. So all of this here would not need to be taught if people are consciously working on themselves and they see themselves and what they need to change because it's all energy. So if I answered that question, then I would say, really, it's up to the individual. I started following the energies about two, a year or two ago. and. Um, what I found is, is that after I started getting um, an understanding of the energies, teaching uh, the energy of Saturn and what it's about, the rigid aspects of Saturn is an energy. And so you transform it. How do you transform it? By prayer or if you chant, whatever your devotion is. Whatever is wrong in you will be rightened because the, the energy is. It's spiritual. It wants you to change for the betterment of the world. So this here, uh, teaching on astrology, 
It's just another step up from, say, like your biblical principles. So if people got the biblical aspect, they and they had fo they followed the devotion. I won't say if they had, because there is others that they have other religions. But at the end of the day, it's not the religion that's the part; it's the people. Religion is ego. If you choose to follow religion, then you're going to stay in the ego, because religion was created out of the patriarch. If you choose to follow the spirituality of these masters. They're called masters because they mastered themselves. That means that the energies began to work with them. They understood it in some way or another, and they were able to overcome the, um, the egoic aspects of themselves. Yes? It's a big 360 degree turnaround. Because you're going from birth into your life and you're gonna end up at the place of coming home. What you came here in or with is supposed to be totally different. And the only way that that can happen is for you and I to work on ourselves because we are one with the universe. The universe doesn't wanna just deal us um, crappy stuff. It's what we didn't know and what we weren't taught to begin with. So we, we are being taught to remember now. The energies are coming where people are more acceptable to different types of teaching. And they're saying, some got to work for me, but it's not going to work for you. You got to work with it. It's a part of who you are. I hope that that's clear. Anybody else um, have a question? I have a question. Yes. Well, my Saturn is in my sixth house and it's in Capricorn. But I know the sixth house deals with like health and repressed emotions, I think. Right. So how would I how would I go about like fixing that? Well, not fixing that, but making sure I don't step into the negative aspect of that. You got to work out. That's in um, the sixth house. It is about working out. But the other thing is getting rid of that um, perfection attitude because it, it brings a colliding, um, colliding factor with Saturn and Virgo. Six houses Virgo. And Virgo is an earth sign and Saturn is too. That means that it needs some water, it needs some air, and it is a sign um, that is noted or intellectual stimulation, meaning that it don't even want to really believe in spirit. They're very brilliant people, but they're not brilliant in some aspects where they will let go of the ego. They have to go through some hardships. Now that's Virgo, but if you put Saturn in there, um, it's going to teach you to get balance. Why? Because you can't have that. Now, if you don't, if you don't follow suit, then what's going to happen is in the health issues, then you're going to have um, problems because that's the house of health, period. So that means that anyone that has um, a sign in that house, I don't, um, but I am on the cusp. I got on, on the cusp. Um, I could see where my intellectual perfection thoughts came from because they were magnified with me being a a Capricorn and having a cuss Virgo. It's ridiculous. People that I talk to, um, you know, I talk to someone and they say, well, you know, I just got so much going on that in my house that I can't come, but I need the help. So this is the thing with them. They'll tell people what they need to do when they're broken. And they, they how do you tell someone that? How, how can you lead someone when you're broken? You have no idea where you're going. You give up on yourself because you have this perfectionist thought that you really think that you know everything. And, and, and so when I say, uh, look around and you'll see the conditions of your mind and your life. And that's the reality that you have within yourself. So health wise, um, they should work out. They should eat right. And if you, you got Sagittarius as your, um, you, sh you, you shouldn't, you should be watching your, um, 
eating habit anyway because they expand in weight. So that's Saturn there. What if it's in retrograde? Because Ash is in, is in retrograde and it's in the sixth house. What's that? Her um, Saturn, it's in retrograde in the sixth house. In Capricorn. In Capricorn. Yeah, that's just um, invertedly. Like we just came out of Saturn in retrograde. It means that you go within. Things, uh, people started making things bad or seem bad with retrograde, but it's just times of contemplation of things that you've done and what you've um, not completed or what you did wrong. In Virgo, it would be that perfectionist attitude and um, changing the transformation. That helps, Miss Kim. Thank you. And Bert. Anybody else? Before I abruptly hang up. All right, so I hope you guys got um, mega information that will help you um, in your relationships, where you are. I, I think that everyone needs to strive to be the best that they can be and not in a um, ego type of way. When the ego submits, it allows people to be who they're gonna be regardless if it's bad or good, okay? And if you, you get yourself to a place where you can just accept people for who they are, you're gonna be in a wonderful place because the ego does not tend to want to release people. It's, it's very simple. And according to the way that we think is according to the way that we overcome the issues because we can never overcome just because of somebody else's failure. We're in this world and the, the energy that we feel is all connected. A lot of us are in a place where, you know, we're being called to release and the magnification of not releasing old energy is causing us to um, be stagnant, um, non-productive. And so once we change our hearts and minds in those areas, production will begin to flow because then we'll be connected with the divine, the divine. And it doesn't matter what season we're in, um, meaning like, we're going to see a regression, I mean, a recession. It doesn't mean that we have to be affected if we follow suit concerning what we do. Um, in positive, in good, because this planet watches everyone. It's not just some, or, you know, because we feel um, sorry for ourselves. The, the strongest Capricorn individual or the seeming strong they can look strong but they're so weak and you can tell the weakness by the way that they treat people you know they yell they scream they're having rants and raves they're having fits that's weak when you start building up people that's when you are working in a strength when you get that ambition under control, then you are working in a strength. When you begin to balance your work life and your family, you are in a strength. These are the issues with Capricorn. When you come into your purpose, this is the good part of Capricorn because they're builders. 
That means that in every house, you look at how it collaborates with that house and how you can build. Where if you're in Virgo together, then you're going to build on your health at all times. Why? Because your health can fail if you don't take care of it. The mental health can. Um, if you are Saturn in Cancer, that is the house of nurturing. That means that if you don't stop being so rigid, Saturn, and limited, you might miss the opportunity of nurturing your relationship with your family. This is Saturn. I'm um, Leo. Leo there. Leo in. No, this is um, Saturn in Cancer. You know, I'm giving an example. Uh, the first house, Saturn in Aries, is I am. You, do, you know, you're learning your identity with that planet there. With Saturn in Aries, because Aries is I am. So you're trying to find out your identity and it's helping you through lessons. How you treat other people. Um, Libra. Libra is on the planet of uh, material and it's love. But, you know, Saturn can uh, restrict it so that it doesn't know how to love. And then Saturn can be brought back into balance where it does, they mitigate the energy together and they understand that it's okay to love, but there's a balance in it. No fear, because again, I said that it brings fear in all areas because it only wants to show people what it wants them to see. It doesn't. Saturn doesn't want to be vulnerable. You could be dealing with the, you know, some of the worst people and not know that they're they're very um, sensitive in their hearts and they don't they don't want to communicate that because they feel like if they let that wall down, then they're uh, that's all she wrote. You put the walls up, then I'm I'm safe, but that's that's not what life is about. So. Um, each house presents itself with an understanding of energies that you have in that house. And that's for each and every person's own understanding. Okay. God bless. Okay, well, I guess that's it. So God bless everybody. Um, I thank you for coming on. And um, thank you. Yes, share the love. You see this? This is what's up. It's Nicole. <laughs> I love you. Oh, <laughs> All right, all right. All right, so I'll see y'all. <laughs> she didn't put herself on um, mute. So I'll see uh, who's coming on tomorrow. I will. Okay. All right. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, Mercury in retrograde. Um, That'll be some um, energy talk, but at the end of the day, look at y'all mastering your energy because that's what you are, your energy. So you can't get it twisted by asking, what's it like today? Like some people are forecasting it, but you have power over it. And that means the power of God within you, goddess within you is there to regulate how you function in these here ever-changing times. People are afraid. And I could say that when I was going through a hard time, that I saw this as, or the energies as something that I couldn't combat. 
but you know, I started, um, I'm not gonna lie, I started chanting and discipline and balance came in even more. I do pray, but um, the independence uh, and liberation of um, me and my stability became more solid. So that's not for anyone to be changed or to be moved. I don't believe that masters can be segregated and that they actually fight over who's the best because that's not you know they're they've let go of ego and so all of the church stuff that people talk about you know i don't believe it and so that the the anybody else can believe what they want to but i don't see anything but obtaining universal love and that means that it whatever i have to do to get my emotions into um, check divine order, then I'm going to do it. No, I'm not going to go out and prostitute my body for it. But on a spiritual level, yes, I'm going to try. Why? Because there's levels of mastery. And these, the, the masters that we talk about, um, they actually represent different areas of our body, just like the planets in the universe. But until you can get the understanding of your deficits and you really come into acknowledging and saying, you know, I'm just, honestly, I'm going to say this here. I'm a fucked up individual. You're not going to get anywhere. You don't have to keep saying it, but you need to embrace the fact that you got flaws and that you need to overcome them. You don't need to look at other people and what they need to overcome. You don't need to like, you know, people are, challenging other people and they're um, one-upping other people. This is the craziest thing. Why? That is, you know, it's petty. And there's people and things that will bring it out of you to let you know that it's there. So um, the ascended masters do not discriminate against each other. Most of the teachings are the same. They're just written differently. All of them came from the, uh, the East. That means that there were cultures that had information historically on religions and they created it. It was philosophies that we created through their own practice. Just like we're sitting here and I'm saying, I, you know, through my teaching, I've seen this is research. All of us are experimenting with our lives. Sometimes, you know, we're up and sometimes we're down. We're making bad choices so that we can make better choices. We're saying the wrong things so that we can say the right things. It's simple, but it becomes complex because of the humanity, the humanistic aspects of who we are. It becomes complex because by the ego, the energy of the ego, the sun in us, we want to do what we want to do. You can't do it. You cannot say what you want to people and treat people uh, how you want to, or you're going to get it back. That's it. Whatever you do to someone else is what is going to be done to you. But the best thing for anyone is to look at their self all the time. Because when you start looking at other people, you're distracted and you're going to stumble. Well, they did this and it don't matter. It ain't paying no, no bills for you that they did it. It's a waste of time. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you really want to complete a cycle in this life, then you find what's really gonna help you to overcome. You set goals and then you know, sometimes you're going to be in a season of your life where you're going to be alone, especially when you choose this path. Because, listen, what I'm saying to you is when people go down like Jesus did, that's an initiate's path. Everybody goes through cycles. Right now, the world is going through a transformation, but initiates are being chosen. And the mastery energy is here. So what are you going to do? You either going to start thinking like people that um, have actually overcome or you're going to keep thinking like you did. 
and keep getting what you did, right? <laughs> That's it. And people like me, I can tell you that you can think like you want to, but if you don't line it up, you're gonna keep getting the same results that you did because you don't believe that you need to change. And why do I know that? Because I got my own mind that was uh, effed up, that I'm working on still. And you know, the perfection part, every day you get up, you're struggling with something, you got to overcome the feeling. Well, how do you do that? Go on and start uh, meditating. Um, go ahead and pray. And then you motivate yourself into feeling and thinking something different. That's where your energy levels change. Uh, people say, oh, uh, well, I've been fatigued. I'm just tired. And I, you know, I say that too. Last month or two months ago, I was saying it in my mind so much. I said, shut up. Because all you're doing is making yourself feel that more the more you think it. Uh, they don't like me. They don't like me. Don't nobody hear me. They don't. They don't. They don't. Because you keep saying it. Change. That's, I mean, that's it. Your lesson is that you need to change. Sometimes your lesson is that you do need to be alone. Because you don't, you won't learn nothing about yourself when you're in the presence of other people. There's a time and a season for everything. So my life has made me have to go in the presence and be with people. Because I prefer, honestly, so quiet right now. I love it because I can think clear in here. I can go and read as much as I want to. So, you know, what stimulates you? And is it healthy? All right. All right. So five o'clock tomorrow. Um, I'll see you guys. And um, thank you for your support. God bless you. Y'all have a good night. Good night, Mr. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you.